today's episode for video and podcast. I'll be continuing the TexasReady.gov overview. On the last one, I covered Be Informed, which is number one right here. And then on this one, I'd like to go over number two, Make a Plan. When you go to the Texas Ready site, this is kind of the main area you see. Make a plan. On this first page, you're going to have different links. How to make a plan, special planning needs, and practicing your emergency plan. This first section, just like we had before, is going to go over kind of a table of contents. Disasters can happen suddenly, so knowing where your family is and how to communicate with them is important. That's why I need to make a plan and prepare ahead of time. And to go through some of these, these are the things to discuss and kind of review. What would we do in case of a fire, hurricane, flood, tornado? Where would we meet if we got separated? How will we communicate if phones are not working? This is a big one because a lot of people rely on their phones. Who should be our family's emergency contacts? Where should we go if we have to evacuate? <clears throat> and remember, this can be like an onion, right? So if you have to evacuate for a small area, say local flooding, like a, a river over flooding or something, that's going to be very different from having to evacuate from a wildfire where that's more of a city or countywide issue or something larger like an earthquake or natural disaster or terrorist attack where you're going to want to go really far away and just get out of the whole situation. What if we have no home to return to? This is something you need to go over. And in this is why you need to make sure that if you do evacuate, you're taking your critical stuff. So your backup hard drives, your paperwork, the pictures that are irreplaceable, those kind of things. If you have children, think about their level of understanding as well. And this is going to change as ages go up, right? So super little kids aren't going to have a clue what's going on except for understanding that there's a uh, panic in the situation. Then, you know, older kids with elementary school, they're going to sort of understand probably in this day and time. And then as you get older, middle school, high school, as you get older, then those kids are going to start helping with the plan, making your emergency plan, use the emergency plan form. So what that looks like, is here and I'll go over one of those again but if you're listening and not watching uh, there's a PDF that just came up of neighborhood meeting place out of town meeting place phone numbers cell phones emails and uh, different information like that then uh, making your emergency plan so you want to have uh, where it says record information such as Birth dates, social security numbers, social security numbers should be kept separately from other information for identity security purposes, medical provider contact information, medical information, including list of prescription medications and dosages. I also like to put on this when you're taking them, uh, just so if you need them and however that works out, medical and property insurance information, work and school phone numbers and addresses. This is beneficial for a few reasons, but one is just some schools or work uh, or some, I'm sorry, some employers will make a point to contact their workers in an affected area. Emergency contacts, <clears throat> a designated evacuation site. And, you know, this is like we just went over with kind of the onion. You know, where are you going to go to a designated family reunification site? For me, these are the same thing. Um, we don't separate that much. We know where we're going to go as a family if we have to evacuate. And that's only going to be a, a small list of places and we know where those are. Telephone numbers of family and friends, including those you use frequently. And then below those bullet points, making your emergency plan, including pre preparing what you need to do before, during, and after a disaster, as well as preparing for stress, emotions, and mental health. That's going to take us back to that be informed section that we went over last time of just being able to recognize when there's a, a mental health issue and how to address that. Then if we go up here, 
um, special. Sorry, <laughs> let me uh, let me backtrack a little bit. So when we go back up to make a plan, uh, how to make a plan? <clears throat> so we're going to go to this section, and this is disasters can happen without warning. So it is important that you and your family make a plan ahead of time, which we just went over a second ago. Um, and save printed copies of this family planning uh, emergency plan form, which again is what we just went over just a second ago. Family members, uh, full names, common nicknames, if applicable, maiden names. Um, this is all pretty similar to what was just on there. We can go through a few of these though. Um, it's going over social again, that information, emergency contacts, the meeting places, phone numbers, addresses to be specific. Um, if you have a fixed emergency meeting place and a photo you have already taken, you already have uh, stored so others will know where to meet. Important information, take a picture of every closet, drawer, and other storage location in your house so that you can itemize things that may be damaged or destroyed. That's obviously for insurance. Who is your doctor? What is the address and phone number? And this can be not just for you, but if you have that document, you are unable to communicate, but the support team that's there, the medical staff or whatever that might be, can then backtrack and see what's going on there. Who's your pharmacist? Similar kind of reason. What medical insurance do you have? Uh, renters or homeowners insurance? Uh, kennel, so pet care, that kind of thing. Sheltering at home. So this is part of making your plan. When staying home is your safest choice, stay tuned to the news. Check what's in your disaster supply kit. And that's here. We'll go over that again on, on the next video. That's number three. <clears throat> and add these items for staying at home. Smoke detectors, extra batteries, carbon monoxide detector, fire extinguisher, phone and charger, solar charger if possible. That way you're not dependent on a uh, grid tied system or something. Plastic sheeting and duct tape to seal doors and windows. We went over that before on a different video. Canned non-perishable food. Manual can opener, and I recommend two. Bottled water. We prefer the uh, the water bricks. It gives a little more mobility and, and more water that's a little easier and durable than just water bottles. Evacuating by car. You may have to leave in a hurry. Disaster supply kit, which again we'll, we'll go over next. So you'll want to have road maps. This Google Maps is good, Apple Maps, but when things go wrong, most likely if it's severe enough where you're evacuating, either the infrastructure is overwhelmed, the cell phone network. So trying to pull data is going to be next to impossible. So you want to make sure you have road maps. Car repair items, so you want to have a few tools, make sure you have a spare tire or fix a flat, that kind of stuff. Food and water, and you know, again, this is for your car, so it's going to be snacks for kids, that kind of thing. Plastic plates, cups, utensils. You want to be able to have something to eat, to eat on, be able to eat whatever that food is. Tent, blankets, and pillows. Clothes and sturdy shoes. Rain gear and towels, books and games, this is again for you know keeping the kids occupied. Before you leave home, take these additional steps. Fill your gas tank. We have a family rule: when it hits half a tank, it gets filled back up. Half a tank is our empty. Um, I highly encourage that. And if you have an EV, then I would it would same would apply. Half charge is empty. Check your spare tire. So, you know, when you go in um, and have your car checked, if you'd like, you can ask them to check it, make sure everything's still good with it. Call your family emergency contacts and share your evacuation location. So that way they know you're leaving and they know, you know, if you're not there by a certain time or day, where to go from there. Um, one thing that we really like is Life360. That's an app to have everyone watch. Again, that goes with needing a cellular data connection. So that could be hit or miss. Charge your phone. Make sure one thing I like to go by is if we have electricity, it's plugged in. And I do that with, you know, 
unless you know we're doing something in, at the moment if it's just sitting it's plugged in that's just something i've just always done download or print a map of your route again google maps could go down apple maps that kind of thing and my, they might even go down but for where you are the towers might be overloaded with their data connection other tips you can use your phone to take pictures of uh, items you need to take before evacuating special medication or brands of food if you have you know um, allergies and that kind of stuff medical insurance and pharmacy identification cards the contents of important documents a variety of document um, scanner or copy apps are available so you can do uh, there's one where your phone take a picture of a document turns it into a PDF those are really great too and just have a folder on your phone but just remember if you're doing that that just like your credit card information, that phone now has critical information. So someone steals it and they have the ability to open it. Like it's not password protected for some reason. Just remember that's something you have to keep in mind. The steps necessary to secure the house before evacuating. So this could be a few things, you know, hurricane, you want to put boards up. Um, It might be turning off your water, turning off your gas, making sure your doors are locked, those kind of things. Uh, it, it just depends what situation you have there. Your personal property, home, or business to show their condition prior to disaster. So again, pictures of that kind of thing. And personal property you want retrieved if you are unable to return home. So maybe there's people going through and they're helping pull stuff out because it's too dangerous for someone to go in. But again, I that's why I'm a big believer in have your, have your evacuation stuff that can fit in your car. So, you know, you're not going to be able to take everything. But again, you're talking about evacuating, not moving. All right, so we'll go back to number two. That was, um, and then we go to special needs. So special planning needs. So there's children. This is a bunch of stuff. Uh, is the child able to walk, require a stroller? Do they have mobility concerns? Uh, is the child able to communicate? So, you know, this, can they speak? Uh, like, you know, can they, um, can they speak in sentences for what's going on instead of just ow or something or pointing at it? Is the child old enough to drive? Will you need to pack additional diapers, food, formula, those kind of things? One thing that I think is really important that we learned is um, we started carrying a jet boil stove to warm up the bottles while we were out and away from stuff. And that was a huge lifesaver. So the jet boil stove is small. You can, you know, heat up the bottle really quick and the fuel lasts forever, especially when you're just doing the the bottle kind of stuff. Does your child know his or her address and parents' phone numbers? What are the emergency plans for your child's school or daycare? That's important to know, you know, how are they gonna handle that kind of stuff? What can the child understand regarding a disaster and potential loss? So you don't want to overwhelm them. You don't want to scare them. But, you know, sometimes you just need to word how that's how that's going to go. Evacuating a disaster area or moving to a shelter with children presents its own challenges. Plan ahead to make an extended stay from your home as comfortable as possible. You'll want to bring along games, books, and crafts it's from the other one to keep occupied and entertained. Plan for increased supervision of your children while staying in a public shelter. Remember the point of a public shelter, evacuation shelter, is to give you a roof over your head, a place to go to the bathroom that is safe from what's going on outside. There is a extraordinarily high chance that you are going to be surrounded by hundreds or thousands of people that you have no idea what their background is. You have got to make sure that you have someone that is really close to kids because those are really easy situations for someone that is bad to take advantage of a situation. There may be times when your family is separated. No one knows when an emergency situation situation might arise. So you have to prepare for anything. Be sure your children never leave home without emergency contact information. Be sure they know whom to call first if you are unavailable. Identify safe places in your community where they should go if lost or separated. Ensure they know their home address and parents' phone numbers. Plan for rendezvous locations and a point of contact outside the immediate family. 
One thing that I like to add on top of this is I'm a big fan of some simple bubble pack radios. Obviously, you can get more advanced into that, but uh, I'm a big fan of it because if we do have to go somewhere, we keep a set in our car for so this kind of situation where if we know we're going to go somewhere and we need to be able to talk and we know we're going to separate, just hand out a radio and it's easy and done. All right, so we'll go back up here to make a plan and special needs elderly. So it's kind of same stuff. You just have to make sure to keep tabs on mobility, that kind of stuff. Um, focus on medications a little more because typically, obviously, they're going to have more um, more medication needs. Um, if you are someone you care for is elderly, if you or someone you care for is elderly, and you have to evacuate, secure a copy of the person's medical information. So this all goes back. The same documentation you're going to say, take for yourself. Whoever is leaving with you in that situation needs to bring that information. If you or someone you care for is an older individual, be sure to consider the following in emergency planning. Any special travel arrangements, that's going to be the same as uh, young kids. Assisted devices, mobility for mobility or health care needs. So some of these are going to be like a CPAP machine or maybe more extensive things. And that's what you need to take into account. Dialysis, is that something they need to do? Because that's going to severely change where you're going to go. And that's a good plan to really dive into what capabilities are in your area. Special diets. Wound care. Has it been a recent surgery? This doesn't have to be for elderly um, once you get into a situation where you're cramming a bunch of people together, if you are going to an evacuation center, you have to remember there, it's going to be like kids in preschool and there's going to be new germs everywhere because some people are going to be there that shower every day. Some people are going to be there that have diseases and haven't showered in six months. Risk of falling. So you have to make sure you bring walking aids or a wheelchair or something like that. Confusion or disorientation. This one you just have to be really careful with and um, just roll with it and see how that goes. Many other individuals are able to maintain a certain level of independence through the aid of special medical equipment. However, some of this equipment may not be available during an emergency because of a power outage or inability to transport the equipment. In planning for these special needs, consider... Does special medical equipment limit your mobility or the distance you can travel? Who will be responsible for bringing along the special equipment if you need to evacuate? Is the lack of the equipment life-threatening, such as in certain cases with oxygen or dialysis, which is what we, we just went over. All right, so we're going to go back to people with functional and access needs. Uh, is It's going to go similar to this. One of the few ones on here is Bariatric needs, um, if someone cannot move or you have to have special equipment to move them, that's something you have to consider. Um, same thing, just over hygiene and, and bandages and diapers. Just make sure you have that kind of stuff and you can keep stuff clean so you just don't have uh, someone get sick easily. Service or comfort animals, so just make sure that if you do have pets that those are allowed in the shelter or you have a plan for those. Individuals may require a high level of assistance in shelter environment that the level in a shelter envi environment than the level needed at home. Shelter cots may not be accessible or appropriate for some individuals. Wheelchairs and walkers may not have maneuverable spaces. So again, you're going to be crammed in places to get you into a place to get a roof over your head, get you a bathroom, and try to start gathering information if you're going to go to one of those for planning purposes call 211 for information about available services which may be available during an emergency and then be sure to label all your stuff everything should be labeled with name or name and some special thing to do that pets uh, you want to make sure you have id tags crating if needed collars harnesses leashes Transportation needs, vaccination records, that might be really important. If you're going to go into a shelter, they might need to see, uh, especially a rabies vaccine. Most shelters, but not all, will have a location to shelter animals, so you might have to be separated from them while you're sheltering. All right, let's go, excuse me, up to here. We're going to go to the next one. 
This is practicing your emergency plan. So when preparing your family for a disaster involves more than just creating a plan. Each family member, especially children, need to know exactly what to do during an emergency. Here are some helpful suggestions to communicate. Designate roles. Give any, everyone in your family a responsibility. Each family member is an integral part of the plan and each has an important contribution. Role play. Younger family members may be easily upset if they see a parent worried or panicking. Spend an afternoon pretending an emergency has occurred and allow everyone to practice their designated roles. This will help your family be better prepared for the rush of emotions. Visit emergency planning places, emergency meeting places. If you have chosen an emergency meeting place out of state, make certain your family is familiar with the location. Assist family members in recognizing landmarks, building signs, curiously shaped trees or other landmarks to help remind them of, excuse me, remind them where they are or where they should be going. Ensure all family members memorize emergency rendezvous location addresses. Introduce your family to emergency contacts. Young children may not be comfortable talking to strangers. Even strangers their parents have designated as safe. Introduce your children to emergency contacts and explain their role in the family plan. Practice regularly quiz family members about the family's emergency preparedness plan. Make it a game for young children. Who's our local emergency contact? Where do we go when there's an emergency? Those kind of things. Point out every every excuse me. Point out emergency essentials. Be sure everybody in your family knows the location of your disaster supply kit. Again, we'll go over that in the next one. Keep your disaster supply kit in one place. If you move, let everyone know where that new storage location is and be honest. Everyone in your family will have questions about preparedness. At least hopefully they will. Take the time to address questions, concerns, and fears honestly and factually. And again, with the mental health thing, you want to make sure to just try to keep an eye out for when... uh, the sadness or depression or irritation what's happening there and that's it so we'll go back to make a plan and that's the main page Uh, and again there's the you know the sections that it goes over and then next time we'll go over build a kit and i will uh, do that we'll do a video on this and i'll do a, a second video of actually putting one together and then what we've done as a family Thanks for watching or listening this um, review, I guess, or study of the TexasReady.gov Make a Plan page.